Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now, tonight we'll be discussing the royal family, including etiquette and whether they can actually teach us a thing or two, especially about how to bring up children. I'll be speaking to royal photographer and commentator Ian Pelham Turner, who has a great deal of inside information for us, and also his business partner, photographer Helena Shard. And we also have Diana Parkinson, who is a counsellor and child behaviour expert. So we should be learning lots tonight about how to bring up children. But first of all, we're going to be speaking to Excel with the news. Hello, Excel. Hello, Chrissy. How are you, my darling? Yes, I'm good, thank you. How are, are you ready doing? to share some Y yes. Happy, happy news stories with us and well, all a bit strange. Yeah, right slightly strange I have today because it's funny you mentioned um, etiquette and all that. Um, I just wonder how this will go down in um, sort of etiquette, um, um, you know, how you do things. A couple who loved their dogs so much got married as a dog's rehoming centre. Oh, that's, that's original. Yes. <laughs> And um, who did you have for your bridesmaid on your day, Chrissy? My sister. And friends, right? Human yes. beings? No, don't say. Don't tell me. Dogs? Yeah, three dogs. <laughs> They're three dogs. They're three. Oh, like photo. oh look. Oh, yep. that's so cute, though. Excel. They made, they made one of them. I would have my cat as a bridesmaid if I had, if I had the cat back. No, you won't. I would have done. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure you don't. <laughs> What it is, right, because they love them so much that they actually decided to have a look and see if they could tie the knot at the, this rehoming centre in mm. Ireland. And um, actually, one of the dogs took the front seat with the bride, <laughs> while the other two sat with the family members on the front row. <laughs> and um, their cake was in the shape of a dog bone. And, okay, that is a bit extreme. I think. And their ceremony happened in the training barn of the rehoming centre. <laughs> we have the pictures to prove it. So I just hope we are... Um, yes, they put a few up already. It, it, yeah, I saw them. Would you, would you do that, really? No, I wouldn't go to that extreme, Would no. you go I mean, to a I cat's do like, home I do like to animals. have your wedding? Well, it depends. Maybe if I didn't have many guests or people that liked me and I had to depend on <laughs> animals to be there. So and I wouldn't have... No, I wouldn't, no. Well, but apparently, you know, as they always say, never work with animals or children on, mm. you know, on TV and, you know, special occasions. But apparently the three dogs behaved themselves so well, you wouldn't notice they were there. Oh, so maybe good. they must have had some training beforehand. <laughs> Who knows? Bit of etiquette for dogs, eh? Well, you like dogs, don't you? Excel? I do love dogs, but I have, have to dog. say. Well, but yeah, well, I used to when I was little. Oh. Anymore. Okay, we won't go there. I don't yeah, want to make you Yeah, let's not. Let's <laughs> Moving not. swiftly on to the next <laughs> news item. Yes, actually, it was recently the Miss Universe um, show mm -hmm. down in, um, I believe it was held in Mexico. And um, it was funny how all the, there were some quite seriously outlandish costumes to represent each particular country. And um, the first one, which we'll show here, is Miss Peru. And she basically went on to look like someone on the Inca Trail. Oh, no, that's not Miss Peru. That's Miss Netherlands. I'll go with the photo then. Yes, leave <laughs> that up, please. Thank you. That was Miss Netherlands we just saw there looking, um, basically having a windmill and a bicycle Let's on her take head. Let's a look. And um, Miss Netherlands. Okay, don't bring the same picture up that you had before. Let's have a look at that one. Okay, carry on talking. Mix. Okay, really that's all right up. then. That's all right. There then. you go. There it is. Yes, that's Miss Netherlands over there. Okay, and um, she be? basically wanted to have tulips and the windmills and the bicycle on her head and the canal and all that. So basically, <laughs> kind of looks like a, I don't know what. Oh, but, how well, fashion has changed. How fashion. Would you walk down the street like that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> well, the next, the next photo, um, Miss USA actually ended up looking a bit like... Um, one of the transformers because it was made up of all different sorts of um talking about the i suppose it talks about the technology that the u.s provides mm. and stuff so he has it so it looks a bit like mr oh, well cool. miss gadget <laughs> like really. quite quite funky i have to say that yeah. one and then um miss mauritius came up with um i suppose you know when you go to mauritius you you picture a bit of you know cocktails by the beach yeah, etc yeah. you know a bit of umbrella in your drink and all that well yes miss mauritius came out looking like a cocktail drink complete <laughs> with umbrella quite colorful oh. actually very colorful and um we mustn't leave out our good old great britain now oh gosh please do tell um miss great britain uh basically 
put all sorts of things, as the article says here, it combines everything about Britain. Pantomime, doilies, Cadbury's and page three. A combination of all that formed one very um, elaborate, regal sort of look, I think he was trying to get, but it looked slightly um, scary and slightly tacky, but um, she was brave to look like that on the, on the show. And so are we going to see it? There is she the is. One? Yes, that's Miss okay. Great Britain. Mm -hmm. No, I couldn't do it. But they're brave. <laughs> they're very brave. And um, I suppose the whole point really was to represent the countries and to represent. But I think it was still something that was. Um, mm, what do you think? It didn't quite work out, did it? Really? No, I don't think no. it was quite because they made it to the top ten most alarming <laughs> looks. Oh well. <laughs> Oh, they try. Never mind. Better luck next year. Slightly alarming. <laughs> well, I thought I'd um, highlight something that actually happens every November. In the month of November, um, it's highlighted to sort of raise awareness for men's charities and, well, men's cancers mm -hmm. in, the, in the month of November. So hence, November is regarded as Movember because you get to grow a moustache for November. Oh. Yes. Some women have also, you know. <laughs> walk around with moustaches attached to them for um, Movember. But it's, it's basically encouraging men no, to so raise a, well, You never know. Um, <laughs> but they, it's used to raise awareness for men's cancers, you know, mm. sort of testicular cancers, prostate cancers, and then also for men's mental health. And I was looking oh, up... Oh, sorry, just, just talking about men's cancer. My dad got the all clear yesterday. Yay! So, yeah, he's been undergoing a lot of treatment and stuff and he had his scan, so I'm just letting the viewers know because, as you know, I did the, the Race yeah. for Life earlier this year as well. Yeah, yeah. So he got the all clear yesterday, so it was some great news. Fab, fab, daddy. that's good to hear. Well done. Fighter. well done, daddy. Yeah. And um, so to, to highlight... No, absolutely, that's very, we like to hear good news on Chrissy mm -hmm. B. Shell. So to highlight the um, Movember um, celebration, the awareness, if you like, it's... Um, it was, I tried to look for interesting moustaches that I found all around the world. The first one, Ram Singh... Your, your news is never boring, so I have to say. <sighs> come on now, come on now. I, I aim to please. <laughs> on, Ram Singh, I hope I'm saying this right, Ram Singh Shuhan boasts of the world's longest moustache, weighing, sorry, measuring... No yeah, well, I'm sure it's got, to, it's got to weigh something as well, right? But it measures... 14 feet long. Oh, no. oh gosh. He has spent that 32 years. 32 years. He his hairstyles with that as well. <laughs> Tell me about it. Some people's hair is not that long. 32 years cultivating his whiskers. And he spends, he spends two hours, two hours a day oiling, brushing oh. and plaiting oh, this moustache. Okay. It must be really heavy though. Imagine dragging that around all the time. Tell me about it. I, in fact, I've got some really funny pictures for okay. you. This is nothing. Trust me, this is nothing. All right, you've got about three minutes to show us these funny pictures. A Pakistani businessman as well has actually been kidnapped, threatened with death, and forcibly displaced and lives apart from his family, all because of his enormous moustache. joking. See what he looks like. No, it's not. <laughs> Let's show a picture of you. So, oh, dear. <laughs> hey, girl. Actually, they have some men in Cyprus. There's a certain area in Cyprus where they have really big moustaches and it looks quite oh similar. Oh my goodness. He's, he, well, he spends slightly less. He spends 30 minutes a day washing, combing, oiling and twirling his Spray. hair into two arches. <laughs> wow. And then David Cameron. Do these, these men have wives? Oh, well. <clears throat> and what they'd have to say about that? Let, 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 I don't want to repeat the conversation I had with somebody today who said, Oh, that looks lovely. <laughs> Seriously, you don't have to kiss him. Don't. <laughs> burn rash we don't want that um david cameron do you ever remember him with a mustache <laughs> no actually oh but we have a, an exclusive photo of david cameron with a mustache i don't remember no him. he only did that for madame two swords in uh, aid of november last year doesn't look too bad actually and yeah it actually quite suits him mm. kind of looks a bit like 007 or something <laughs> bond I wouldn't go that far, but yeah, it just it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> and my very favourite, favourite um, TV detective, um, Hercule Poirot, we all love his little, yeah, yeah. little handlebars. But he he gets away with it for some reason. Absolutely, in the middle of a great. crime, while his the little grey cells are thinking. He it just really suits him, I don't know Absolutely, why. absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. But I have to say... Um, Maybe it's the accent. Ugh, there is something else here about a man, an Indian gentleman, who's facial hair he's 60 
He's an Indian villager and he grew his moustache to be 12 and a half feet long for 22 years in an attempt to enter the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> but it kind of looks a bit messy. See if you agree with me, please. It looks, it looks wrong. It's long. Don't show me, please. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the moustache that looks messy? <laughs> I think they've fallen asleep in the control oh, room, no. Excel. What do you think? I think I just demonstrate. He was holding it. <laughs> oh. Like that. Oh, Awful. The picture. Awful. Oh, and there is a, we're going to get the picture. And there's oh, no, that's not the one. No, that's not the one. It's got a yellow turban. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> All right. I shall be having a meeting about this tomorrow morning. <laughs> production team. Tell them off, Chrissy. Tell them off. And well, finally, well, the I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. We'll put it on our Facebook page for everyone to see. Yes, if indeed. You to, I if think. you want to know what that is, if you just do a search under the Chrissy B Show, we'll post the picture there for you. Indeed. That's a and, deal, isn't it? and finally, if I have to say, um, before we, um, how many minute, more minutes minute. have I got? One minute, right? How much would you pay to look younger, Chrissy? That's not a fair question to ask on a TV show when I didn't know you were going to ask it, Excel. Haha. <laughs> okay. Something that wouldn't be artificial. Okay. I'd, I'd spend. It's, it's a cream. It's a nice cream. Yes, yeah, I it's would, a cream. Yeah. How much would you pay tops? Like, I, don't know. I don't know. Would you pay twelve and a half thousand pounds? No. Well, okay. Creme de la mer, <clears throat> as made by the French jeweler Boucheron, it actually costs. 12,000, 12 and a half thousand. Why? Because it, um, it is contained in a mother of pearl case with a Clause de Paris motif and a sea blue jewel I think on the lid. We're paying for the packaging in the container rather than yeah. the actual cream, right? 12,000. You know what? Just drink lots of water. We have to go to a quick break. Yes. So thank you so much for the interesting Yo. news and we'll join, you'll be joining us again very soon. Yes, with certainly. Your weird stories <laughs> okay so do join us after the break and i'm going to be speaking about the royal family with my lovely guests so do join us after this don't forget to subscribe to the chrissy b show always aiming to show you the happier side of life you can find us on youtube facebook and twitter don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back and now it's time to talk all about the Royal Family and with me I have Ian Pelham Turner and also Helena Shard. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Thank it's you very much. It's so lovely to have you both Thank here. You. Thank you. So Royal Photographers. Oh, we so Commentator. famous. Gosh. I know. Very I know. How exciting. interesting. Very privileged. Gosh. So it's how did you both get into well. it in the first place? Um, Ian is a different age to me mm. and he's been doing it for longer. That's a polite way of saying it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and he's had fantastic um, opportunities photographing Prince William when he was a, a young young little boy, his first Christmas pictures. Yeah. Um, and that really sprung board him into his royal photography days. Mm -hmm. um, I joined him later on in, okay. uh, in his experience. She's a mere but, you child, know, you see. Oh, a mere, ch yeah. mere child. A mere child, me, just a mere <laughs> child. But um, then from there, there's been fantastic opportunities, oh, great commissions. Yeah. So you've got loads to talk about, I'm sure. Well, we yeah. have loads and to how, what was that first experience like for you? The very, the very, the very first time, I, I mean, I've been a, a royal photographer 46 years now. Mm -hmm. So the very first time I ever worked was um, a photograph of Princess Margaret. And she came to my hometown, and I was a young boy. I think I was a young boy. <laughs> um, and I got this great photograph of Princess Margaret. She was opening a, a new bridge going over the Medway Towns in Kent, where mm -hmm. I come from. Uh, and the photograph was actually turned into an oil painting. It's still in the Guildhall oh, nice. to this day. And wow. it really sort of started the passion for me. And I was very lucky that um, I, I became, uh, first of all, a Fleet Street photographer very early in my mm -hmm. career, much earlier than most photographers. And I think that was recognised by the royal family. And the royal family tended in those days to actually try and help springboard young photographers. Oh, and it's part of one of the campaigns we're actually trying to talk to the royal family about at the moment, because mm -hmm. we feel right now 
that uh, sort of very well-known photographers are being used, mm -hmm. uh, and they could use young photographers to actually spring oh, all their careers. Great opportunity for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. to actually sort of spring all their careers. So when I did William's first uh, baby shots, Christmas baby shots, that really I think gave me the springboard. Is that, is that one of the ones? Was that the first one you That's did? That's one of the first ones. I mean, the, 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 there's this, um, <laughs> it, it, it was seven minutes ingrained in my life. In those days, uh, when you did a royal commission, and the, the, these photographs were taken on the 23rd of December 1982. Mm. They were the Christmas photographs to 85 countries. This was the official photograph. No pressure then. <laughs> no <laughs> pressure at all. I mean, uh, it, 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 it's probably the best diet you could ever possibly imagine. But for two weeks before, I knew I didn't eat. Oh, you poor thing. Because, because I knew the types mm. of things that could go wrong. Yeah. Uh, and in those days, uh, they would sit down on a, on a sofa like this, and you were pre-warned. You couldn't talk to them in any way, shape or form. You couldn't direct them. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. In any way, shape or form. And as soon as they sat down, there was a lackey with the stopwatch right next oh to me, gosh. and I went the stopwatch. Now, there's, there's, a, there's a ruling in royal uh, circles, which is called the 30-second rule. And the 30-second rule is that no royal event must last over 30 seconds. If it does, it throws out the routine for the rest of the day. Oh, dear. That's so very strict, isn't it? It was very, very strict. And for four of the seven minutes, Diana had William's teething ring right in front of her face. Oh, so you couldn't, you couldn't say anything? So I couldn't say anything. I <laughs> oh couldn't no. say, Mom, would you mind moving this teething ring? Because the most famous oh. woman in this world, I couldn't see her. So in the end, I made a noise like I was dying. <laughs> and the reality was she turned round, she saw what she was doing, she pulled the teething ring away. William went to grab the teething ring, and one sixtieth of a second, I think that, that created probably one of the, the most iconic photographs of William. Which was the one William. we just saw, wonderful. Yeah. That must have really springboarded your, your career then. It, it created all sorts of things because part of being a role photographer is dealing with the unexpected. Mm. And this can happen all sorts of times. Um, and after the seven minutes was up, Diana decided that uh, she hadn't finished having her photograph taken. So she picked <laughs> William up and walked straight towards the camera and left Charles on the settee. <laughs> We don't need him. Oh, that's quite that's a lovely picture, though. So, and, and you can Another see one. the look on his face. <laughs> he, he, you know, being the, the future king, mm -hmm. likes to feel that he is part and parcel of this project as well. So, uh, you know, I had these sort of wonderful photographs of Diana and William smiling away, mm -hmm. and there's Charles, not the happiest person in this world. So he, th so he then, uh, we, we then watched this tussle happening where he then picks William up from Diana and puts William on his knee, on his tummy, and starts tickling him <laughs> because they're both going for the front page picture yeah, the following oh, day. They're buying so, attention, so you, you can see, So that's William and the royal laugh. Oh, but yeah. at times, Helen has got a great mm. story as well. About got a few great stories. But things but which that one can are you go talking wrong. about? Oh gosh, what happened, Eleanor? So uh, this this which, is particular which type. Is but, 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 which one are you talking about, <laughs> Ian? The, the, one, the one I'm talking about <laughs> is when you shook Charles's hand. Oh well, I, actually, it was an opportunity in a way. We had a um, fantastic time. It was the Chakravarti Cup, which was years ago, mm -hmm. and we were um, photographing um, Prince. Prince of Wales and Prince William and it was there were lots of businesses there and they were coming to shake Charles's hand it was very special um, and there we were and I was sort of edging back edging back trying to take pictures and ended sort of flipping myself into the queue mm -hmm. he actually saw what was happening this is uh, Prince of Wales and, and sort of joined in with a joke and started laughing and shook my hand mm -hmm. and sort of started speaking to me and saying oh nice dress and so Ian managed Aww. to capture a lovely lovely picture of me but it, it wasn't supposed to be like that obviously but it was just a fun have a look at that. It was Do just a fun a shop. Yeah, oh, so there we are. So I've got my camera on the shoulder, so oh. it's quite a special one for me in a way. So so I, I think she did it. I think it she did it to get a picture of her with Charles. An unexpected I've never moments. had a picture with the royal family in my life. Unexpected oh. moment. But, um, <laughs> he really had your moments. I'm, as well. I'm waiting to fall in line. <laughs> I have to say, he was absolutely charming mm. and really good fun. Um, I think sometimes we hear these stories about Charles that he's mm. maybe not quite as. Um, quite regimented in his way, but he's fantastic with people. They're he's fabulous. a real people person, as yeah. the majority of the roles are, but he's amazing. Chats, 
you know, about everything, really mm -hmm. makes you feel quite special. So I had that moment I wasn't supposed to have. But, um, oh, yeah. well, you got in no, there. I was good. like, I felt <laughs> and, very, and they, very they all well had this most wicked sense of humour. You know, you, mm -hmm. you'd look at the Queen at times and you wouldn't think she's got a wicked sense of humour. Don't ever <laughs> test, don't she, ever test it. You know, funny. there's there's some strange things. We we were analysing um, the photographs the other day. You know, the the latest photographs mm -hmm. uh, that have been taken by Jason Bell, um, and we all noticed the Queen's handbag, which is never photographed. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it, it, it was. Uh, what uh, handbag does she have? Well, this is what we're all trying <laughs> to find out. You know. Can you photograph it? Can you <laughs> follow it? No, we don't <laughs> for, 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 for about 36 hours, I've been commentating on TV stations around the world. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we, we're on another TV station, we're doing a breakfast show. And of course, all they wanted to know was not, not my experience, it's what, who owned the handbag. Right. It, was the, it was the maker of the handbag, for God's sake, so I should know at six o'clock in the morning after three hours sleep. But anyway, that, that's the top that's thing. That's the most important thing. That's the, type of thing, that's the type doing? of thing you're faced with. That's the type of thing yeah. you're faced with. But the, the, um, because she uses her handbag to a very yeah. good effect. She mm -hmm. does. She signals with it. Oh. So she has different signals. Can you do the moves? I don't know. <laughs> 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 do you normally have, <laughs> she'll normally, no, she'll normally have her bag on the table mm -hmm. um, so her staff around her will, will be able to see what she's doing. Um, and if she moves her, I think if she moves her bag left from right, right to right, it means that she's had enough of where she is and yes. who she's speaking oh, that's to. That's such a good plan. I know, isn't that and amazing? She, oh, everyone's going to be looking out for that now. Yeah. <laughs> and if she leaves it on the table, which is great, she's no, having no, a great time. No, 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 no? That means she wants to go to the loo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, there's all these signals, and, and obviously all these sort of the, the people yeah. around her understand these signals. Oh, very clever though. Very Roy, simple. Royal very and you both picked up on those Royal things. Seen, <laughs> <Royal> <laughs> <laughs> So what else can you tell us? Any sort of funny stories, that things that have happened there, before there, we there's go some, to a break? There's some funny Gosh. things that happen at times. What, one of my friends recently, and this just shows the, the wickedness, sense of humour of the Queen. Uh, and one of my friends um, is very high up in, in Buckingham Palace, mm -hmm. and he's a consultant um, to one of the main commercial directors to the Queen. And this gentleman loves cars, absolutely adores cars. Uh, and he was with one of his other friends walking around the back of Buckingham Palace one night, as you do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do. most of us do that, don't we? And, and they, and they <laughs> pass the garage where all the royal cars are, all the Rolls Royces, mm -hmm. all, the, all the different cars are. Uh, and my friend said, I've always wondered what it's like to sit inside a royal car. Go inside one, they said, this guy said, go inside, there's, there's no problem, you know, go inside, sit down. So he sat down in this car and, and his friend is you know, from the palace, is sort of sat beside him. And th this headlights come round the corner. Oh no. And, and, and they hit straight on, full face, onto the two of them sat in the car and it was the Queen. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> it was the Queen come back from somebody, and, and, and she saw, and she waved, she waved at the two of them, and my, my friend said, what do I do? What do I do? Fight. So, 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 so the other guy said, wave back. <laughs> I think that's the whole thing about etiquette as well. If the Queen actually waves to you, then obviously you can wave back. You oh, never wave first. Oh, really? Oh, okay. See, wait we're going to be, to be talking to about be this invited. after the break. So, so you're going to be sort of teaching us a few of the things that obviously Absolutely. you've witnessed as well, and, and about how you know, because things have changed a lot over the years, and children aren't really the same as they used to be. Unfortunately, not all children, because there are some that are very well behaved and they've been brought up really well, but there's others that could, you know do with a bit of changing and hopefully we'll be able to help guidance. the parents tonight and so, yeah, with some guidance. So do join us after this and we'll be delving into that after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show and now we're going to speak about etiquette and something that we can learn, a few things that we can learn from the royal family. Absolutely. Ian, let's start with you. What do you, how do there, you think? There, there was a case differs? this week of a tremendous faux pas. Uh, and the Queen was visiting a market in Leicestershire 
And the lady who was guiding her around the market decided to put her hand on the Queen's back and start guiding her around the stalls. Mm -hmm. And that's an absolute no-no. And there was this fam very famous story uh, about uh, the Australian Prime Minister doing the same thing years ago. Mm -hmm. Being a gentleman, really, and he, he was just giving her a guide. Pushing her along. <laughs> and the look on the Queen's face was, <laughs> don't do it again. <laughs> you can always tell when the Queen enjoys something mm -hmm. and when she only has to give a look. And so it, you, and you know it, that look, don't you? You know <laughs> that look. You know, I, I, years ago, a uh, um, very quick story. Um, I have a story for every occasion. In 1977, I was working with the royal family uh, during the uh, Silver Jubilee. Mm. And uh, I, I was asked to uh, work with the Boy Scouts Association of Great Britain. And they were going to do, we were talking about Guinness Book of Records, they were going to do a Guinness Book of Records. And they were cooking the longest sausage in the world to go into the Guinness Book of Records. This was a mile and a half long, was actually done in troughs in Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was done almost like a maze system, up and down lanes, and, and it was this sausage being cooked. So um, my, my role was to take the photograph of the Queen looking at the sausage, what, a mile and a half long. <laughs> so I could see the Queen coming in the bottom end of this, almost like this maze system, and, and, the, and the sort of the width between the troughs was just about width, you know, hip width mm -hmm. and no more. So I, I, I started sort of, so I thought, oh, I'll walk halfway down, photograph the Queen, you know, doing it, and mm. then I could walk back. What I hadn't realised was the entrance I'd come in, the Duke of Edinburgh was now walking down, oh. and I was trapped <laughs> between <laughs> the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. And, I, and as, as she was coming up and down the aisle, she was starting to look at me because she realised I was trapped as well, and she wasn't in the best humour uh, <laughs> at, at the same time. And... As she finally came down the aisle that I was in, I thought the only thing I could do was kneel. It just seemed appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed appropriate to kneel down and try and cur you know, curl my way under this trough. And as she was coming kind of walking down towards me, she recognised me, but she raised her brolly. And what I does thought, that mean? Uh, well, I thought she's either going to hit me or, <laughs> or knight me. I was hoping it was going to be knight. <laughs> I thought this might be my knighthood, but no. It was, and there was this tremendous... <clears throat> As, as, as she walked past. So sometimes you, 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 first rule of journalism was always look for your escape routes. Right, before it. <laughs> <laughs> that Especially leads to the last one. Yeah. Okay, I mean, what, what the, have you the thing, I mean, the thing about, we were talking about the Queen, actually, um, Your Majesty, mm -hmm. really, not, not the Queenie, um, is, is you should never refer to her as Queen. It's always Your Majesty and then Mom afterwards. Mm -hmm. But in fact, she is not that strict when it comes to faux pas. Mm -hmm. It's normally the journalists and the newspapers mm -hmm. that are the ones that are on, on the attack if they see mm -hmm. anything. But um, th there's just small little things with, with etiquette. But I think the funniest thing is it's relating Victorian times to the present mm -hmm. day um, is that when, when eating with, with um, the Queen, uh, she obviously, once she's finished eating, everyone that sat around has to put their forks, knives and forks down. Even if they haven't finished? Yeah. Ooh. But in, in Queen Victoria's day, when she was very young, she never ever ever took on board the fact that everyone else had to eat around her. And she used to shove her food down her mouth, you know. And people used to sit down and want to eat their food, but they couldn't actually even start their food because they wow. had to, because she'd finished food. But it's a difference, Victorian day, mm. no time to the present day. Um, I mean, it, I mean, it's still it's nice that you know there are people that still sit down as a family and eat together because mm. most there's a lot of children <laughs> nowadays that don't even sit down with their parents to eat, do they? No. They're not eating as a family. I, I think uh, you know we we analysed. Uh, we we have a major exhibition at the Athenaeum Hotel in London called mm. the Royal Child, and so we've analysed 150 years of how royal children have been brought up mm. and the tremendous strict regimes that they went under, you know, and and, and even today etiquette wise. Um, you would think that Kate wasn't involved in etiquette, but she is. Mm -hmm. if, if, um, if William is in the room with her and the Queen comes in, she doesn't curtsy. Whereas if William isn't in the room with her, she always has to curtsy to mm -hmm. the Queen. And so there are these etiquette rules that still apply to this day mm -hmm. as well. You know, the, the, these things you know, continue on. Uh, with it, and um, uh, ladies like Camilla, who I've got tremendous respect for, 
in reality, you know, have, have actually sort of softened this sort of sift and down as well mm -hmm. in things. But you, you know, you, you can find um, the, the etiquette uh, and, and the upbringing of children in Victorian times was so harsh. In Victorian times, uh, when uh, Edward, the son of Queen Victoria, didn't lead up to the expectations they had, they did a thing called phrenology. Prince Albert wanted Edward to speak three languages fluently by the time he was four years old. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I can't even do it now. No. no you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, 62 years on. Um, wow. And when he didn't do that, they did a thing called phrenology. And phrenology was very, very important at that time. And phrenology was the shaving of the head of the child, four years old. Uh, and they had a, a, a gentleman called George Coombs, who was the top phrenologist at the time. And he looked at the bumps on the skull of mm -hmm. Edward. And he decided from that that Edward was educationally subnormal. So they then, for the next few years, put Edward on this seven-hour regime oh gosh, each day. Thing. So that, you know, the, everyone thinks that uh, Diana and, and Charles, or Diana especially, was the moderniser of the royal family, and we don't. When, we, when we've looked at the history of royal children, we, we can see that it was actually the Queen Mother and George VI. Mm -hmm. They actually introduced new methods that had never been done before, and this was yeah, with Crawford. They had a, a lovely upbringing, actually, because Queen Victoria, Victorian times, it was quite a lonely t time. They mm -hmm. were, it was a very austere upbringing. I mean, Queen Victoria didn't have any friends, you know, 133 dolls, and they were her friends. So she had a very unhappy upbringing. As a mm -hmm. result, her children were also brought up to the same sort of unhappy upbringing. Um, but so it Queen looks all glamorous Mom, from the outside, yeah. doesn't it? But we don't know but what the goes Queen on. Queen Mum and George the Sixth. I mean, they had quite a normal upbringing. In fact, they were brought up in Bruton Street, which, interestingly enough, is a Chinese restaurant mm. now <laughs> in Piccadilly, which is quite funny. Um, but they were brought up um, re really loving family. Um, mm. Every morning they used to all have cuddles in the bed, and really, it was oh, only awesome. when George the Sixth suddenly became king um, by default that things slightly changed. Mm. But it was. They were really, they were brought up so And it well. shows you etiquette then came in, because on, on, up to that time, um, both Elizabeth and Margaret, as two young daughters, would run up and hug their father every morning. Uh, and he would do this thing with sugar with them. Uh, and he would give them a spoonful of sugar each on their hand. Uh, and Margaret used to grab this sugar and put it all in her mouth at the same time. And Elizabeth actually used to sort of put it into different sizes because they were sugar you mm -hmm. know, particles. And then she would, she would have one piece at a time. But on the morning that George VI became king, they were told that from there on in, that they couldn't hug him after he'd come back from oh. being king. They had to curtsy to him. Oh gosh, that must have been hard. And that was the new mm -hmm. etiquette process. And they practiced their curtsies whilst he was away at the coronation. So that they could yeah. actually curtsy to him that must have been hard, though, to do for them. Imagine they just yeah. wanted to run up and yeah. hug their imagine. father. But, but I think tradition and, and yeah, how they were brought yeah. up, so it became quite normal. Yeah, I think in, in modern times as well, which I think was very is, is a lovely thing, is that um, Zara Phillips um, mm. always, every time she sees um, the Queen, she she will always curtsy every single time, mm. which, which I, mean, I think is really quite charming. Yeah. And she's one stickler with tradition, and she always talks of, because she's still fairly young, isn't she, Zara? Mm. This talks about how people, you know, don't carry on the, the tradition, and certain people can't curtsy, and really it's something which is, is a lovely thing what to continue. What do you think can be sort of, uh, if I could say, copied from maybe the, what the royal family do with their children to, like, the everyday person? I, I, I think the re reality nowadays is that, uh, as we know, um, William and Kate are bringing George up in a very normal environment. You know, th there's a lot of misconception, um, you know, ab about George mm. uh, and how he will be brought up as well. Kate is a very normal, wonderful lady. You know, uh, Kate can be seen walking up um, uh, from uh, uh, Kensington or Chelsea, you know, with with, with um, you know her shopping bags and a handful of chicken. Uh, <laughs> William loves roast chicken, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and and so she does normal things. 
They're you very know. relaxed, aren't they? They're, it's a they're couple very, very relaxed. relaxed. Mm. It's, they're sort of like the old school royals, but we've moved into the sort of more modern the royals, and they are. Yeah. They want. They don't want the faff <coughs> and th things around them. The they bus, just want to, yeah, yeah to I mean, even be dressed right. casually. And it, it's nice, isn't it? It is. I think it, people it, can relate to them. More, yeah, like. exactly. The relating. We, yeah. we, we had a. We we were at dinner recently with um, William and Kate's next door neighbour at Kensington. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, both this lady and Kate walked their dogs together, you know, in, in the afternoon. And uh, William appeared one day and she said, oh, have you met William before? <laughs> yeah. and, and it was just like, um, <laughs> have, you cool. my, have, you, have, you, have you met my husband? Oh, did, did you? <laughs> oh, yeah, so these, nice. these things happen. I, I think uh, the reality is, is, and what we try to sort of explain as well, is we take out the mystery and the misconception mm -hmm. of how raw children are going to be brought up in the future. I think they're going to have a much more normal uh, way of life. It's, it, it's, it still has tradition attached to it. I think the thing that the royal family bring is tremendous hard work. Mm -hmm. They're taught from a very Huge early age work. that that yeah. is their life. Mm -hmm. And that's how they are brought up. And yes, they enjoy things. They do a life. huge amount of hard work there yes, for the country. True. They really do so many royal um, outings that they have to do representing. Which sometimes they don't get credit for from no. the public. They, 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 they don't people. get credit at all. And, and the amount of, um, you know, part of our business is, is analysing tourism. And the amount of money that's brought in, mm. in invisible earnings, mm. because of the royal family. You know, so so all, all, all this talk recently about Charles not paying tax or, you know, all these tax things. If you analyse that against how many billions are brought into in. London each year mm, because, because they are there. Them, definitely. Especially over the last couple of years, everyone's been travelling into London mm. and spending their money, which is great. We need it to continue. Oh, the, the Royal Family is very royal popular family. in other yeah, countries. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's been so fascinating speaking no to both of you. Thank you so much oh, for coming on. we can on. tell you so much more. I know, we'll have to have another oh, show on sad. this, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to it. Too many stories. We talk for Britain. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. It's been fun. And after the break, we'll also be speaking to Diana Parkinson, who's a counsellor and child behaviour expert to add to tonight's topic. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Okay, so I'm now joined by Diana Parkinson. Hello. Hello. Nice to have you back because you've been on the show before, haven't I you? Have, yes. Yeah, <laughs> How have you been? One. I'm fine. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. I'm really, I found this topic so interesting today. What did you think of our oh, guest before? Really fascinating, yes. I'd it like was. to hear more actually. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely have, have to do another show, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure there's so much to talk about. So let's, let's talk about now, um, sort of the upbringing of children nowadays, because things have definitely changed from, you know, when I was growing up and I had a lot of respect for my parents, especially my father, even though he was very strict and sometimes I think a bit too strict, but I still had that, you know, genuine respect for him and like I would never answer him back or anything like that. But things have changed so much nowadays and you see just kids sometimes running wild and disrespecting their parents, their, their teachers. Where do you think the problem is, is you know, where does, where does the problem lie? Yeah, I mean, I think there is a problem. I think too, though, that actually lots of children still are well behaved, mm -hmm. but it's definitely down to the parents. Okay. So, you know, if, if parents set rules, if parents, and, and it's also about the parents respecting the children as well, mm -hmm. and the children will respect the parents. And children need um, need guidance. They need rules to live by. They need a structure. It helps them to feel safe. So when you talked about your father being strict, mm -hmm. I'm sure that probably you knew that it was because he cared, because yes, he loved did, you, yeah, yeah. and you were important. Mm -hmm. And that's why he was strict. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also the whole thing about manners. Is there's a saying about manners make of man, and yes, they do. Good manners are there for a reason. They help society to function. We should consider one another. It shows that mm. we are caring. You know, if we have no manners, we're not caring for anyone else, but we're also not caring for ourselves. Mm, so true. we devalue everything. And I think it's really important that we, we start to respect ourselves and everyone around us. Mm -hmm. We should respect all life because it's important. 
and we should have good behaviour because it's important. It's like sometimes our parents seem to, parents nowadays, they seem to be afraid to even discipline their children or set any rules, put any rules in place. Yes, I mean, which is really worrying. And I think it's too because in society we haven't really got rules. For, a lot of the rules have gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they needed to change, but we didn't need to get rid of them. And I think we've got rid of too many rules mm -hmm. so that teachers, schools have no power, really. That's true. Um, I mean, when I was a child, if a child was naughty at school, if you'd done anything wrong, your parents were more likely to take you to apologise to the teacher. Or if it was, you know, some neighbour's window, you would go to it, have to go and apologise and mm. pay for a new window. Or, you know, we, we were brought up with manners that were very important. No, nowadays. And now, <laughs> and now you've got Completely parents different. threatening teachers. And that's, that's horrible. That's absolutely appalling. That, that is really horrible. We, I hate we, it when I hear things like that. But it's about, you know, when we read about people... Um, in care homes not caring anymore for the patients or you know it, it's symptomatic of society collapsing mm -hmm. if, it, if it's allowed to continue I think we need to care we need to have manners if we hold a door open for somebody I mean I don't know about you but I'm happy to hold a door open for somebody of course and yes so and, and by being polite, you get rewarded because somebody smiles at you. Even a smile, at you. even a yes. smile. Sometimes people look thank so you. depressed. You know, and like, thank you. I make a point of sort of smiling at a bus driver or, or people yeah. around me. And, and it does, I do get a smile back. Well, yes. But then other times it's like you feel, people look at you like, why are you smiling at me or why are you talking to me? It's like, it, Which it's is like they find it, people find it strange if you actually mm. struck up a conversation with a stranger or just being friendly. Mm. But I wouldn't I stop that so. because most people will respond to that. Yeah. And it is important if we smile at one another, if we're nice to one another, we get it back. Mm -hmm. You know, being helpful, it's, it's what makes, what's what makes us human. And we really need to get that back because it's so important. Mm. Without good manners, I remember we, actually there was a I think there was an interview lost. with some of the the London bus drivers and they what, they interviewed one of them and they asked him what makes you happy on your you know because it was a very stressful job and he said when someone thanks me when they get off the bus mm. that really makes me happy just a simple thank you. Oh, okay, yes. it's your job to drive the people around you, get paid for it, but just the fact that, you know, you've driven safely and you've been friendly with, and to, to receive a thank you was just, it makes someone and, day. And also then he will be friendlier towards people as well. I mean, yeah, it, it, it goes both ways. So mm. you actually get a much nicer atmosphere with everybody being nice to one another, being helpful, being kind. We should kind. give the viewers some homework, shouldn't we, this yes. week, shall we? So, yes. so every day, try, try it from tomorrow, even today, well, it's a bit late now, but try it from tomorrow, just try smiling at people. So smile at the bus driver, smile at passengers, smile, just start yeah. smiling, just smile be more friendly and, and say hello. And get. And how are you sometimes? Reaction. Or can I help you sometimes yeah. if you see somebody struggling? It's just common courtesy mm -hmm. and it's really nice. What we do you think parents can teach their, their children, like maybe it's a few top, of your top tips that you could say, okay, it would be really great to teach your child this? Yeah, I think it's it's to teach children to that. Well, if if the parent tells the child that they love them, talks to the child, discusses things. If the child wants to do something, that there's a discussion, mm -hmm. um, and that the child is listened to, so they're able to express what they feel. But the parent obviously needs the ultimate power. Mm -hmm. um, but but by talking to one another, listening, trying to understand yeah. the child's point of view, and encouraging the child to understand the parent's point of view. Mm -hmm. um, but but setting parameters so the child will feel safer so it is about you know children need regular time regular meal times bedtimes not cast in stone there needs to be negotiation and you mm -hmm. know special treats to stay up a bit later but that the child is, has an idea of how life will function mm -hmm. you know when they go to bed what they're allowed to do what's acceptable I think I would say to parents I would I would discourage parents from allowing children to have too many electronic gadgets in a oh, bedroom yes. so that they yeah. actually the, the computers somewhere in, in a living room so that the mm -hmm. parents can see what the child's looking at Definitely. Um, you know no no electronic devices in after bedtime in the bedroom mm -hmm. um, because and the, I was never allowed a television in my room growing well, up a bedroom is supposed to be yeah. for sleeping in really mm -hmm. I would say that sounds a bit old-fashioned <laughs> but I think it's a good idea Sleep is important. Yeah, a child yeah. that gets you know, good rest at night will feel better at school, will do better, mm. will be healthier. So again, these rules or, or etiquette, or whatever you like to call it, um, a structure for life helps us all to feel better, mm -hmm. helps us to be healthier, wiser, nicer. I mean, growing up, I did, sometimes I used to get really upset with my father. 
But looking back now, I really appreciate everything that he did for me. And I even said to him later on, because he, he kind of felt guilty for some things. And I said to him, no, you were fantastic, Dad. And I would, if I had children, I would be exactly the same. Probably I'd be a bit worse, actually. <laughs> I would do the same thing because I know that you were caring for me then it seemed he was too strict he would allow, allow me to go out with my friends and things like that but I think I avoided a lot of problems because of you know not not doing certain things that my friends were doing I and mean, we did pretty well in life so you know I really respect him for that and even though I didn't understand at the time but as I got older I did yeah I think that that's perhaps the thing that parents should need to explain to children why mm. they're not allowed to yeah that's, 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 that's what something to do. there needs <laughs> my to dad be... was like no is no and that's it and there's no discussion yeah, and I yeah. think it used to you know that's sort of a hangover too from Victorian era when it was like you know that's it mm -hmm. I'm not discussing it with you. you you know children should be seen and not heard in other yeah. words but I think it is important if we encourage our children to talk yeah. and we do need to be really Reasonable and it's good for them to have friends and socialise but as parents we do need to know where they're going and yes. we do need to have an idea of what they're up to Definitely. and I think bringing their friends into the home so you know your children's friends mm -hmm. Um, you know that that makes everything much better for the child Definitely. but all children should rebel it's healthy to rebel they're going mm. to push boundaries the danger is and the problems arise when there are no boundaries so there is mm -hmm. no limit you can do what you like and that's that's the problem I think that we see nowadays that worries us that there are no boundaries you can mm -hmm. do what you like so make sure you set boundaries absolutely and, then, yeah. and the okay. boundaries make you feel safer even they though do. you got annoyed they do. with your dad which I can understand. But I felt very safe. I, but I but it, you were, it was right that you got annoyed as well. <laughs> it's normal. But he did it because he loved you yeah. and he wanted to keep Definitely. you safe. We've run out of time, don't we? Okay. Oh, that's gosh. Fun. It that's just flew by today, didn't, didn't it? Uh, yeah, we could come back and discuss <laughs> yes, this again. We've yeah. got so much to talk about still. Thank you so much for Thank coming for to the show me. today. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, so if you want more information about any of our guests tonight, please do visit the website, chriscbshow.tv. And if you'd like to email me, if you have a suggestion for a topic that you'd like to see us cover, covering on this show, please do email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. It's been lovely spending this hour with you and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now. So you're going to take us through some training first, all right? Yeah, we will be. We've given you a little bit of training. Then we'll take you out on track after we... I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Just Don't worry. blank, oh dear. Maneuver the hovercraft and we go out on track from there. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to it and let's hopefully pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really enjoyed that and I can safely say that I passed that challenge because I won. I had great fun and it's not actually as easy as it looks, does it? Is it ill? Is it ill? <laughs> I haven't done my speech yet. Hello, <laughs> ill. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Neil! Really? I haven't said anything yet, okay, it's great! Neil. Okay, sorry. Well, you said to him, it's like, Neil! I had great fun today because it was really good! Sorry! Oh no, I can't get the giggles. Alright, sorry. Do you want a quick cup of tea before we start again? Oh, great! Oh god, here we go! We're going to have one of those days. I'm not going to live! Alright. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh dear! I can't snap out of it. <laughs>